Hey everybody, I'm Mina, and I couldn't be more excited to welcome you to day two of Global Learning. Today, we're gonna to be talking about a few of my favorite things, inclusive learning, accessibility, and ensuring equity for students of all abilities. One of the reasons I got into teaching was to make sure I could really help everyone explore and fulfill their curiosity. But something I've learned very quickly is that students come with all different abilities, different skills, and learn completely differently. So we have to be able to reach and give them access and include them in everything that we do. So when I think about accessibility and inclusivity, I think it's one of our greatest tenants as a teacher, but one of our most difficult challenges. That's why I'm so thankful for Microsoft's educator community, and of course, their accessibility tools. Ready to learn how to utilize these tools in your classroom? Let's get right to it. Hello, my name is Taylor Lowe. Uh, I am an Emmy Award-winning motion graphics designer. I am currently serving at Park Avenue Christian Academy in Titusville, Florida as the Technology and Media Academy Director. Uh, I'm a showcase school leader, an MIE expert, and master trainer. Uh, today, I would like to share my story of dyslexia and how uh, what I thought was a burden and a disability growing up is now I consider a gift. And to say the word gift in front of dyslexia makes no sense. Like Everyone sees that as like, I think you misspoke there. Let's back up and try that again. Like you have a disability. Um, and I think it's, it's a great thing to say because that opens up a, a conversation channel to explain to them why dyslexia is a gift. I want to back up to the early 90s um, when I was in school and the 90s were great. The music was great. The cartoons were great. And I loved going to school. Uh, I loved learning. I loved the rectangle pizza on Fridays. Like it was my thing. But about midway through second grade, uh, our school put in a gifted program. And with that gifted program, a certain uh, group of students, they would go to the library during a period of the day. They got these cool, fancy binders and they would go in behind closed doors and do gifted things. And then I was kind of like, I was like, well, I like challenges. I love school. And I was like, uh, I went to my teacher and I said, you know, I think I'd like to try the gifted program. I think I would enjoy this. And she looked me in the eyes. She said, you could probably do this work, but you're, you're slow. Like there's no way you would be able to keep up with these students. that hit me like a like a freight train in a truck like a freight train carrying trucks you know like you i loved school and i thought i was doing well in school and that comment alone just opened my eyes like i became aware of what other students were doing while i was doing my work and so she was right um when we we're doing worksheets i would look around and everybody would be done but me so i'm always the last one and everyone's looking at me like why is that guy taking so long to do their work and you just feel that it's kind of like a shame that just starts developing um i was listening to students read out loud in class and they're just nailing it and when I read, everyone, I get done and the teacher looks at me like, you added a whole bunch of words that weren't even there. And you know, you were mispronouncing it. And so I was just afraid to read. And so I, I was never tested for dyslexia when I was young. I knew nothing about it, completely unaware. And so when you don't have awareness, you think you're broken because everybody around you is just flying through school, doing all this stuff. And I'm looking around like, I know that I'm not unintelligent, but I just, I can't keep up. And so you, you start hiding, even though it exhausted me. I, I truly valued education. I knew that is the key to life is education. And I knew I wanted to get a master's degree. Like I just, I wanted that for my career. I wanted that for me personally. And looking at colleges and master's program, I, I, I kept saying to myself, do I want to do this again? Like, do I really want to take on another school, you know, level of schooling where I'm going to struggle. And that's when I found Full Cell University. And, you know, their their whole tagline is it's non-traditional education. And I was like, OK, go on. Like, how is this non non-traditional? And, and the way that their their course structure is set up, it works perfect for the dyslexic mind and other students, because when you design for dyslexia, everybody wins. And when you design con curriculum that works for all learners, everybody wins. And so I was nervous about going into it because of my previous feelings towards school and how much I struggled, but it worked. Every facet that you could use to learn is truly multimodal education. And then it wasn't where it was like, okay, listen to the teacher, remember that and write it back down. It was do some research, watch these videos, listen to your professors, read these books, and then create something with that knowledge. It wasn't just memorization. And so I'm like, wow, this actually works for me. And so we turned in our final paper, like your massive final project. It was like, you know, 
huge weight off my shoulders. I got it done. I, I flew down to uh, Central Florida to Orlando to because I, I was walking across that stage because <laughs> how hard that was. You know, it was hard for me. And so I'm going to get that diploma. And so uh, I was. We're in line. And so I'm up next. And they say um, <laughs> the the announcer said, and the valedictorian for this class, Taylor Edward Lowe. And so, you know, you walk up on stage and it was like years of just shame went away. It's like they were wrong. You know, they were wrong about me. Like, you, you, I'm the same student. The only thing that changes is the curriculum. And that's how important designing curriculum for all learners is. I think that's where all educators need to step back and look at their curriculum and like, what are you designing for? Like, if you, you have to include everybody. And that's the cool thing about Microsoft and with, um, you know, with their learning tools is that they are truly have a passion to level the playing field for all learners to be empowered to achieve more. I mean, that's that's their goal. I went to the Microsoft Educator community, vital resource. If you're not using it, do it now, today. It is critical for your career, for your school, and for your students, and it's free. Like, why not take advantage of this amazing resource? Um, and I finished the Mac. I've, I've done all, all the courses on there, and every single one of those is read to me. Like, I didn't read anything. And so that's the cool thing about Microsoft is that they, they have these tools, use them. Being dyslexic is not that you're unintelligent. It's that you just need help in certain areas, but you can soar in other areas. And so when Microsoft gives you these tools that level the playing field for you, do it, use it. You know, that's intelligence is finding where you're, where you're weak in something and getting something to help you elevate that one area. And so I was going through the courses on the Mech and uh, there's one on dyslexia and I was like, oh my gosh, it's like, it's you again. You know, it's like that person you don't like that keeps showing up. You're like, oh, it's you. And so I'm like, great. So let's do this. Just just power through this course. Like, here we go again. And, you know, the, it's, it was uh, created by the Made by Dyslexia team. And you know, the first video is Orlando Bloom comes on there and says dyslexia is a superpower. I'm like, what? It's like, we no. And so I backed it up. I even made that play in like half speed. I'm like, let's listen to every single syllable that he just said. Did he just say dyslexia is a superpower? And it was. And then it goes on. You see all these men and women that have done incredible things to society and as, as, a, as a culture as a whole. And they're all dyslexic because when you put dyslexics together in a room, amazing things happen. Or if you give dyslexics the tools, like whether it's arts, engineering, you know, um, the areas where dyslexic mind will thrive, they do amazing things. Um, but it all goes back to that path that you, I had to make the decision when I was in third grade. Am I going to listen or am I not? And so when that and that's where it's scary, because there's so many of our students in the class that they're in there, whether you believe it or not, they're in there. And if you don't think you have dyslexic students, they're hiding in plain sight like I was, because that's what they have to do. And so that's why awareness is so important. And I would recommend any everyone should watch the Made by Dyslexia courses on the Microsoft Educator community because it will raise awareness and it will show you how to do this. And then piggybacking off of that, if you don't know how to design inclusive curriculum, there's courses on the Microsoft Educator community about how to do that. It's all there for you. You just have to, all it costs you is your time. And so you have that power as an educator to provide curriculum for a student, to set them up and their family for generations to, to achieve more. And that's the power of Microsoft with their, their learning tools uh, that they provide for you for free. So I will be forever grateful to Microsoft for providing these tools for, for people like me who have dyslexia because I use it every single day. The immersive reader, I am within, within one, and I'm so glad that it's everywhere. I see it in Minecraft now. I'm like, yes, like everywhere there's a something where it needs to be read. I can do it with Office Lens. I can have a document read to me. Like the, the, I feel so much more empowered now to, to, to take on my career because of the tools that Microsoft provides. And I'll be forever grateful for that. Thank you so much for listening to my story and I hope you have a great summer. Utilize the Microsoft Educator community. You take this time over the summer and just soak it all up. Like I said, it will make you a better educator. It will improve your school, everything. So take that time, make it happen. And thank you for listening to my story. If you're dyslexic, it's kind of your superpower. It's like the way that you think. Our brains, uh, they're wired to, I think, process information 
differently. It's just the way that you see the world. I don't think people do think the way I think. And we're curious, uh, we're creative. The way I see the world might be different from somebody else, but that's valid. In fact, it's vital. Hi there, I'm Kate Griggs from Made by Dyslexia, and I'm really excited to be with you all for Global Learning Week. Made by Dyslexia is a global charity, and we exist to help the world properly understand, value, and support dyslexia. We know that dyslexic thinking skills will play a vital role in the future of work, and the two reports that we did with EY reflect exactly how vital dyslexic thinking is. Like many dyslexics, I, I much prefer coursework. I can spend as much time as I want doing it, and I'm not held back. The exam and the assessment system is, is stuck in a time that is just not reflective of what the modern world needs. Robot minds that can pass exams are not the types of minds that the future needs dyslexics are. We also looked at the amazing role that technology plays for dyslexic students in school but also in the workplace. Because technology helps to mitigate a lot of our challenges, leaving us free to focus on the amazing strengths that we know we've all got. That's why we've teamed up with Microsoft to produce some really amazing dyslexia awareness training. The dyslexia awareness training modules that we launched just at the end of January have been viewed by 99,000 teachers. That is unbelievable. The training is video based and it features teachers from two of the world's leading dyslexia schools, one in the US and one in the UK. The teachers share all of their wisdom, lots of really useful tips on how to spot, support and empower dyslexic students. The training is free on the Microsoft Educator Centre and I really hope that you'll pop over and check it out. We're really excited to be announcing later this year Connecting the Spots, which is a global advocacy campaign and movement to help make sure that every single teacher in the world is trained to spot, support and empower dyslexic students. So I really hope you'll take our training as part of Global Learning Week and have a really, really great week. Thanks so much. everybody, my name is Giselle Simpson and I'm talking to you all the way from Cape Town, South Africa. I've been teaching for plus minus or more than 10 years. I started off with a Microsoft Educator community in 2014 and it's just been an absolute game changer in my life. It's been such an amazing platform to encourage me as a teacher to just keep giving me year after year that fire and passion to go out and teach and inspire my students. When you look at these tips and tricks I'm going to show you in these tools, you're going to see how these tools are actually so interactive, but also so empowering for your students who are on the other end and might be feeling like they have been left. They don't know what they're going to do. So tools like this, we've been using this during remote learning and it's definitely, it's revolutionized how the teachers teach and how our students learn and now going back and phasing in um, the different grades and having the students come in we're also finding that the students are more confident in themselves and in their learning they are taking ownership of their learning by using these tools I absolutely love PowerPoint for presentations, for lessons. It's just so amazing. So I'm going to show you this tool called Design Ideas inside PowerPoint, and it's going to save you hours and hours of time trying to make a presentation look amazing. Your presentations are going to look as though you spent the whole night doing them, and you maybe only spent five minutes doing them. So I'm going to show you this. We're going to do a, a quick two slide demonstration. And I'm going to title this presentation, My Favorite Things. One of my favorite things is pizza. And I'm going to insert, or I want a picture on this slide. I'm going to insert the pictures online. 
are we going to search pizza? Okay, another quick tip while I have you on the screen. When your Creative Commons is clicked, so selected like that, it means that you have access to these pictures and there's no copyright on them, so you can use them freely. When it's unclicked, you are then opening up to, if you take that picture, you're not entirely sure if it is copyrighted, so make sure that your Creative Commons is on and then I know I can use all these delicious pizza pictures. So right, I want to choose one. I'm going to say insert. Now, this is what happens. The picture is all over my text. So if you're having a look now on the right hand side of my screen, it says design ideas. So what Microsoft has done is PowerPoint now automatically gives me a range of ideas for what would be the best way for me to present this picture, highlighting my favorite things on my title slide. So I literally have a range of ideas on the right hand side, which I could choose from. So I quite like this one and I can click on it. And it will automatically change that title slide for me. This saves me hours of work trying to make it into a background, get the shading right, trying to position it the correct way. So literally I've just gone and clicked there and it has changed the slide for me. If I add another slide deck, now what happens? Here they're already showing me templates, but there's nothing on there. So if by accident I closed the slide, and I'm going to type now um, walks on the beach. It's another thing I like. And I'll do text. Let's do text and not picture. So let's say um, spending time with friends, reading. Okay. So this is quite bland. And now again, what could I do to make it a little bit more beautiful. So when I click design, I have a whole list of things I could choose here to also make the background look nice and different. But again, I could click on the design and have design ideas generate a template for me. And look at this, how beautiful is that? So again, Design Ideas has given me a list of how they think it would look in a presentation or how it would look good in a presentation. And I can click on that and it saved me hours of work again, trying to design the background. Okay, so now the presentation is complete and I have to now save it or share it. Most of my colleagues would be saying, oh, Giselle, okay, I've shared it, but now it's opening up and it's literally, this is the view. No one, they have to first click slideshow from the beginning. When I save this and I go to file, save as, and I'll browse, I'll put it in a document. You're going to click, so my the title is my favorite things and you're going to select the drop down and you're going to say PowerPoint macro enabled show. So what does this do? If I save it in this format, if I share it with somebody else and they receive that, they are literally going to see it in a show form. So it's going to play to them as a video and they don't have to go into the slideshow from the beginning function it's already going to open up to them as a video. This is nice if you're doing a lesson um, and you did a recording of your voice over the lesson just to play to your students and they're literally downloading it as a show. So that is a fantastic, fantastic tool.
Hi everybody, how's everyone doing today? I'm thrilled to be here with you all to share some exciting updates and tools that bring accessibility to the forefront in Windows 10. In the latest Windows 10 update 2004, there are plenty of free built-in features that can help make the display and inputs more accessible for educators and learners with differences in their vision, hearing, or mobility. I'm thrilled to have Jeff Petty from the Windows 10 Ease of Access Engineering team here to speak about what goes into to designing these features. So thanks so much for joining me, Jeff. Great to be here. Awesome. So uh, just to start off, can you speak to me a bit about what sorts of considerations or different users your team has in mind when designing the features in Ease of Access? Sure. Well, first and foremost, we want to create delightful experiences for people with disabilities. And as you noted, that includes a broad set of users, including people with vision, hearing, manual dexterity and speech disabilities. It also includes people who are neurodiverse. Second, we wanna create better experiences for everyone. There are a lot of great examples. Um, Windows supports closed captions to make it possible for people who are hard of hearing or deaf to consume video content, for example. Closed captions are also great for language learners to improve comprehension or for anyone in a noisy environment. Awesome. And um, of course, Ease of Access works on all Windows 10 devices, no matter what price they are or whether they're in a school or a workplace or just for personal use. Um, are there other technologies that work with Windows 10 to help empower users? There are a lot. Um, I tend to think of universal design for learning um, as a great framework to think about Windows in the classroom. Um, universal design for learning or UDL is a way of thinking about teaching and learning that helps give all students an equal opportunity to succeed. Um, the approach offers flexibility in the ways that students access material, engage with it, and show what they know. Um, developing lessons plan this way helps all kids, but it's especially helpful uh, for kids with uh, learning and thinking differences. And the tools that we have on Windows 10, whether they're from Microsoft or from third parties, can help implement universal design for learning. For example, a, a teacher might author an assignment in Microsoft Word and a student might consume it very differently, um, maybe with a screen reader or a magnifier if they're blind or low vision. Or they might use the immersive reader built into Microsoft Word to have the text highlighted and read aloud if they're an emerging reader or a person with dyslexia. So Microsoft and our partner ecosystem provide multiple means for students to access material, collaborate, and express what they've learned. That's good to know. Can you give us uh, any hints on what's coming in the future to ease of access? Sure. In the latest update, which is rolling out now, we've included a bunch of improvements for people who are blind or with low vision. One of the ones I'm most excited about is a new magnifier reading experience. We heard from people uh, with low vision that they get tired after straining to read for extended periods of time. And they want a simple solution, like the ability to read text in any application by just pointing and clicking. Magnifier Reader does just that. It also highlights each word as it's read. So it's a good solution for language learners, people proofing content, and again, people with dyslexia. Basically, everyone benefits from both seeing and hearing words read aloud. Totally agree. So um, if there's one thing you want educators around the world right now to know, what would it be? Oh, well, I gotta give a couple. Uh, you know, first, Microsoft is investing deeply across our full suite of products to make them more accessible and delightful. We've heard that students appreciate accessibility features that are built into products like Windows and Office, that are non-stigmatizing and that give them their independence. And we've heard from teachers that they appreciate that there is so much to leverage within Windows and Office because it can save them time. So please take some time to learn about what's there today and, to, and take advantage of it. No tool is a silver bullet but we're making it easier for teachers to improve learning outcomes. Please help your students leverage technology to achieve more. And please keep the feedback coming. Uh, we're shaping our experiences based on feedback from folks like teachers uh, and others. Thank you. Awesome, yes, absolutely. Second to the feedback. And thank you so much, Jeff. And thank you to everyone for coming with us behind the scenes of ease of access and accessibility tools in Windows 10. 
If you want some ideas for how this can apply in your class, I'd highly recommend you check out the new Windows 10 for Education course on the Mac. You'll also find some tutorials on personalized feedback through inking, secure test taking, sleep and productivity tips, uh, fostering creativity with the free video editor, and lots more. Thanks again so much for joining us and enjoy the rest of your time with us at Global Learning Week. Hey, it's me again. How's everyone doing so far? Out of snacks? Well, hang in there. We've got Giselle coming back now with even more tips to level the learning field for you. This is going to change the way you look at your documents, at your tests, at your comprehensions from now on. So I've, I get a lot of questions of teachers asking, where would I find this? Oh, just I'm struggling. I don't know how to do. And what's like a total lifesaver is they can actually just click on the search here and tell me what to do. So if you wanted to look at editing, you can literally click on the editor. And this is like having a personal PA, especially for an English teacher. So if a student has submitted a document or you have even set up a test or you've written a paragraph or a comprehension you've set up for them, what's really nice about the editor is you can click on there and the editor will tell you the grammatical errors, the spelling errors, um, if acronyms have been used, if it's there's clarity, consciousness, formality, inclusiveness. It's just such an in-depth tool. And then it can tell you, so it gives you stats, readability stats, um, to speak distinct words. And if you click the information, you have it over there, it will tell you what the readability is, what is the distinct words. So this is really nice if you're proofreading a document or a test that you've set up and you want to have a look at those, it will tell you this is how boulders actually should be spelled. And you can click it. And so if you're giving feedback to a student, that's also good to know. And students can obviously also check their work before submitting. So this is absolutely excellent to look at. I mean, you can say if you want to ignore, or you can just click on the word and it will change the words automatically to the correct form, which is excellent. The next tool I'm going to show you is Dictate in Word, and this can be used offline and online. And this is going to save you hours of time having to sit and type. You're literally now going to speak to the computer and Word is going to dictate what you say into text. So let's at the top on your bar, you're going to click Dictate. And the minute I do that, a little bar will pop up, a little tool at the bottom. And as I speak, whatever I say, the words will appear on this page. So let me just show you that quickly. So I'm going to click on dictate. So today's lesson will be about. And did you see what that just did there? Like Lizzie saved me so much time. I could just tell the computer what to do. I'm saying it to the word. It's dictating. And whatever I'm saying, it is dictating onto the page. I mean, aren't you loving all these tips and tricks? Um, so next up, we're going to be looking at the accessibility checker. And this is done in Word. And you can also use it in PowerPoint. Again, if you wanted to find where to go, you literally click here and you can say accessibility. And what the accessibility checker does, it'll check your document and check how accessible it is um, for your reader, for your audience. You can also go to the review bar and there you can check accessibility there. And literally over here, it will come up and it will say last checked. So this is all that tools that you've done and you can check it was checked and this is the time and it will tell you if any accessibility issues are coming up in your document. It will tell you here at the accessibility 
checker. So as a teacher, and I know teachers, we carry around so many files. We've got a file for art and a file for history and a file for um, important policies and documents, etc. Now, OneNote is such an amazing tool because you literally can take that file and put it onto your computer and you are only then going to carry this device around with you and you can access it from anywhere in the world where you have an internet connection. So OneNote is like having this digital binder. So I want you to imagine that this is your big file, right? And you've got different interleaves in your file. So, so this is the one that I've set up for our school. And you literally can see here. So you've got your file and you can have subsections in your file. So here you've got the calendar. And there's January, February, March. And this you can share with whoever you like. You literally click on the share button and you can give whoever access to this OneNote. If you are doing, for example, a training, you can set up the training and you can put all the information inside there and share it with the participants. What's also wonderful with OneNote is it's embedded in Microsoft Teams. So let's say if you as a teacher, you're working on a OneNote for history or a OneNote for geography, you can share it then to your class team or to your class notebook, and then your students will all have access to that. And you don't need to worry about where have I left this file, I didn't bring it into work, or chugging around all these big files with you. You can now have it all online. So you can see you can add a section, you can add a page, you can embed videos. And once again, do you see that it, it works together with Word, with all those tools? So you could even dictate and then they could also, while you're dictating, whatever you needed to say for that document, you could add that way. Okay, so the next tool that I'm going to show you has really helped so many students of mine. And it's an amazing tool if you have students struggling with things like comprehension or just even focusing. I'll show you this amazing tool which is embedded into a Microsoft Word. It's also embedded into PowerPoint and you can also use it on OneNote. So you literally go again to your tell me what to do and you go and type in immersive reader, which is this little tool over here. And now look what's about to happen once it's loading. Voila! So the immersive reader changes your document to look like a book. So more readable for the student. Now, the, this is the poem which I just had up now, and I'll show you quickly the different tools that the immersive reader has. So you have text preferences, and when I click on this button, I can literally change the text size. So this really helps with your visual learners. The learners who need to see the text a little bit bigger, they can then literally just adjust it and it will make the text bigger as they need, right? So that's excellent. You can increase their spacing or switch it off. And what's nice about this tool is the student and the teacher can personalize it to their own specifications. I find when I read, I can't really see nicely. So I want it to be on the black background and then the words are popping out at me. However, you might be looking at the screen and saying you don't see too well when that is the case and you can then change the theme to better your vision. You can also change then the font if you wanted to do that. And there's a whole range of colors you can choose from. There's also reading preferences. And this is another great tool. So if I switch the line focus on, 
if it's selected on the one, the tick, it will show only one line. So let's see here you are erasing all that distraction for the student where they literally just have to focus on this one line we're reading. And when they scroll, it will literally just move one line at a time. If I choose three lines, again, when they scroll, they will see three lines at a time. I also have the option for five lines. And again, show them five lines at a time. So you can translate to Afrikaans, Arabic. These are a whole list of languages that if you got a text, you could actually translate it into that language for you to read easier. The grammar tools are fantastic if you are an English teacher. Or even if you're teaching, if you're a TEFL teacher and you need to teach um, English as a foreign language. So you could change the color. I know some teachers um, in their classrooms, they have like a system where they say nouns will show in purple, verbs will show in red. Um, nouns will show in red, then you can actually change that to suit your classroom needs. And when I switch this on, it literally will show me the nouns in the text in that color. So now the student knows that all the words that are highlighted in purple are my nouns. My verbs are in red. Does this not just blow your mind? The adjectives are in green. And then the adverbs in like a golden color. This is really a fantastic tool. We've seen students, their comprehension skills, their reading skills, their confidence when they are working with the text. Just boom. Another function is you can do a read back. So you can click play. The sea. The sea is my home. The sea turtles. So it will read the text back to you. And this again, very important for your student who is auditory. So now they can hear how the word is pronounced and you can set up the voice settings so you can make it slower or faster depending on how the student reads. And you can choose a female or a male voice. That is the immersive reader. Thank you for this opportunity that I could have to share with you guys. I want to leave you with one quote. There is no point in teaching if you are not learning alongside your students. I hope that you've been inspired and I hope that you take something back and you go and inspire your students to create, to innovate, to critically think, to become the best versions of themselves. I hope to see and connect with you. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Thanks, Giselle. These tips are going to help a ton of students and teachers. For me, I know dictation and immersive reader were tools that proved to be some of the most beneficial. It's one of those things that once I allowed some of my students to use, it was like their entire world had been opened. I had students who feared writing, and as soon as they realized they could click one button, and speak their words into a document, it changed their ability to feel included in their classwork. And then with Minecraft, I had students who really didn't feel comfortable because they felt like they didn't have the skills and that caused overwhelming anxiety. But when I was able to show them that immersive reader was in Minecraft Education Edition, the student went leaps and bounds ahead of the class. They were able to complete their work, their challenges, and incorporate themselves into class discussion which for so long had proved to be such a challenge. These tools are just a few things that Microsoft offers, but I know are powerful assets to any classroom. Hi guys. Oh, and now I, I think I hear Mike T. Is that you? Hi guys, down here it's me, Mike T. Whew, hey everyone. I don't know how I got here, but it's incredible. I mean, one second I'm dreaming of built-in accessibility tools and the next, okay, I see how this could have happened. Robin, whoa, you're in my dream too? Hey Mike, I figured this was the best way to show you some new research on Immersive Reader. 
We spent a lot of time teaching you how to use these accessibility tools, but now we're gonna show you the impact they actually make on students' lives. I can't wait. So hey, I got a question for you. Do you know how many students around the world have learning disabilities? I do, Mike. As of 2019, it was reported that 15% of students had some type of language or motor-based learning difference like dyslexia, dyscalculia, or dysgraphia. Students with these learning differences each think and process information in their own unique way. But features like line focus and parts of speech can help make reading easier. In fact, a study revealed that some people who experience visual crowding could read up to 10% faster and with 50% fewer reading errors when reading text with extra large letter spacing. That's amazing! And reading speed increased 27% when using short line lengths. Right, and syllabification increased reading comprehension for adults by 10%. I think what I love most about these tools is that they're built in, mainstream, non-stigmatizing, and free. So students with disabilities never get singled out. And I'm just so glad these tools are making it easier for teachers to create inclusive classrooms so they can help their students learn in a way that works for them. Me too. And even while remote learning, it's even better because these tools can help the teacher deliver the learning individually and personally. Educators play a huge role in supporting these students with learning differences and making sure classrooms are accessible for everyone. Absolutely. Did you know that most educators who use accessibility and assistive tech tools save approximately 97 hours of instructional time per year? Wow! That means they can dedicate so much more time to what they do best, which is teach. Exactly. And that's not all. The study also revealed that the assistive tech tools like Immersive Reader improved overall reading and writing performance by 20%. So Immersive Reader has a real measurable impact on learning and on student success. That's right. This is the best dream ever. Thanks for sharing that with me, Robin. <laughs> you're welcome, Mike. And you know you're not actually dreaming, right? We recorded this voiceover together. It's for Global Learning Week, remember? Um, I knew that. Um, anyway, on to the next segment. Bye, everyone. Bye. みなさんこんにちは。私は日本の東京にあります工学院大学附属中学校高等学校で英語教師をしております中川千穂です。どうぞよろしくお願いいたします。本日はMicrosoft Did you know Microsoft Stream supports real-time translation in many other languages? It's pretty amazing. It's pretty amazing. It's pretty amazing. It's pretty amazing. Or should I say, it's pretty amazing. Most of my students are Japanese. They learn English at school as a second language. This is a video that my students shared it with me. They are very young, so sometimes they talk in, a, in their own language or they talk very fast, but I can understand them very well thanks to the transcription on the right side, especially in Japanese. Multilingual learning is just the beginning. You can also have AI-driven audio enhancement and removal of background noise if you use Microsoft Stream. When you teach English in, in, as a second language, sometimes if you hear some kind of background noise, it's very annoyed. But in the, if you use Microsoft Stream, you won't have it. So you can have a very successful English classes if you use it. We all learn differently and tools like these make it much easier for students of all abilities to succeed. Well, that's all we have time for today. I hope you learned something new to take back to your classroom. Thanks for tuning in to Chiho's Corner. Bye. Hey folks, I just had to pop in and share the exciting news. I'm in the inclusive classroom right here and I wanted to talk about some of the great new updates. So number one, PowerPoint Live is now fully rolled out globally. PowerPoint Live allows you to inclusively present. You can have over 67 languages in real time captioned and translated for people connecting with their own devices. So if I'm presenting, anyone can connect and get real time translation and captions on their own device, really powerful for remote learning and including students as well as their parents. So PowerPoint Live in the web fully rolled out and free, part of Office 365. Try it out today. Second, 
the Immersive Reader has some big updates in the Edge browser. So if you go to blogs or different websites with news, there's a little Immersive Reader icon in the upper right. You can click that and you can get the Immersive Reader on that page. So read aloud, different page colors. We've just rolled out line focus and translations coming soon. In addition, the really exciting update for Edge browser is you can just select any text on a web page, right click and choose open in Immersive Reader and boom, it'll be right there, ready to go. The third update is Office Lens Immersive Reader on Android. So if you have an Android phone or a tablet, I can take a picture of a book or any text and it'll run OCR, Optical Character Recognition, and then you can hit the Immersive Reader button in Office Lens. That means the entire page of any book can now go into the Immersive Reader. You can access the text, you can read out loud, change the background colors, translate to another language, picture dictionary, everything built in, mainstream, non-stigmatizing and free. So those are three of the biggest updates for the inclusive classroom. We hope you try them out and we'll see you soon. What a great day. I'm so glad you could join us. And on behalf of all my wonderful co-hosts, I'd like to say thank you. Thank you for supporting inclusive education, for recognizing the needs of every student, and for working towards equitable learning outcomes. If you'd like to learn more about the resources and tools we've talked about today, visit the URL. Whether you're teaching from home or from your classroom, you're making an incredible difference in your students' lives. Thank you. Tomorrow, I'm passing the baton to Adam Short Shorts from the Flipgrid team, who has tips and tricks for engaging your students both in and out of the classroom. Hope to see you there. Bye. <laughs>